Hello and welcome to another newsletter from the Vescomola Health and Fitness, this time May 2015. The topics today are, first of all, mentorship with Institute of Motion. A second is the second of 12 small things to implement in your life for healthier living. Third topic is the myofascial lines, today the superficial front line. And last but not least, I'll give you the recipe to a soup this time. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but it's getting cold out there. So, first up, Institute of Motion is doing a mentorship uh, in movement education. And I signed up to join, so I'll be flying over to Surface Paradise um, for a weekend full of Viper fun, movement, conditioning, myofascial lines and all that kind of stuff. So there will be a few days where obviously sessions won't be available. Um, that is from Tuesday the 12th, uh, late afternoon till Sunday the 17th of May. Everything is back to normal it's coming Monday the 18th and I should have a whole lot of new knowledge bombs and new movements to share with you all. So keep an eye out for the next newsletter in June 2015. Um, second topic, the second of 12 small things to do for healthier living. Last month I encouraged you to um, implement one or the first thing of 12 small things which was adequate hydration. Um, I haven't heard any feedback about people of how they went so uh, I don't know if anyone actually did go ahead and try it but if anyone did I hope you had some good results with it. This time I'd like to encourage you to get adequate sleep. What does adequate sleep mean? As usually um, it's different from person to person for me, I find I'm doing reasonable well on six to seven hours. Eight hours is usually I wake up like a complete zombie. So um, go ahead and play with it around. Like see, see, just yeah, try certain things to see how you actually go. If you can afford over the weekend to maybe wake up uh, without an alarm clock. And I also like to not have the room completely dark so actually leave um, a bit of light coming through the windows because we've got our internal clock and you know back in the day when there was no artificial light we would actually wake up with the um, sunrise and pretty much get tired as soon as the sun started setting where nowadays because of artificial light you know a lot of people don't go to bed till way past midnight which is really not that um, healthy uh, research shows that the best sleep one can get is actually in the hours before 12 o'clock. So between 9 and midnight um, are quite essential hours. But I know that a lot of people usually don't go to bed before 10, 11, as I said, 12, even after midnight. Anyway, um, so yeah, go ahead and have a play with that. Um, I've, there's a little picture here. showing you just um, how many hours of sleep apparently different ages need but as I said everyone is always different has different needs so uh, you just really got to go and find out what works for you um, go ahead and reduce your stimulants like caffeine in all kind of ways so your coffee your artificial stimulants like Red Bull and all that kind of stuff Chocolate um, can be stimulant uh, to some people as well. Um, and also going to bed watching TV uh, is usually quite stimulating to the nervous system because the backlight of the TV is, is a blue light, like a blue LED. Um, and again, research shows that um, that blue backlight is can, can be very stimulating to the nervous system. So even if you have any other electronic devices in your bedroom, anything with a blue light, try and cover it up with some tape. Red light is okay, um, but yeah, any, any other um, blue shouldn't be. And again, as I said, natural light that still is coming on throughout the night um, is, is a difference to any light you will have happening in your bedroom. Um, so if you want any more information on sleep, um, not too long ago um, I wrote another blog on it. 
um, I've linked that blog into this newsletter, so just have a scroll down and click on the link. Other than that, what can not enough sleep actually do to your body? Um, it can have different effects like um, obviously shortening of attention, blurred vision, slurred speech, um, difficulty making decisions. Obviously, we get quite a bit of foggy in the head, but also um, other stuff like an increased risk in diabetes, um, weight issues can happening, your immune system gets impaired. Um, and there's also a risk of um, heart conditions, cardiovascular conditions, as well as depression and anxiety. So uh, getting enough sleep is very, very important. And a lot of people only live on, you know, maybe five, six hours a night, if not less, sometimes more. But then those are after midnight, so people sleep from 12 to 7. They're getting their seven hours, but again... Um, research has been shown over years that it's before midnight that that sleep that is is essential to get a good rest and recovery so give that a try over the months um, you've got four weeks to play around with it and see what kind of works for you what what time frame works for you what makes you feel waking up refreshed and um, with a spring in your step and I'd love to hear your feedback so let me know how you go Topic number three, the myofascial lines. Today I want to tell you about the superficial front line. There's a quick photo to show you what it looks like. As you can see on the picture, we actually got kind of three lines that work as one continuous line when we are in an upright position. So what actually happens, we've got on both legs, we've got the lines attaching on the top of the foot, just on the toes going through the ankle complex on the front here, on both sides up through the shins, um, over your knee into the quads, and then into the hips, finishing or ending here on the sides, um, in the pelvic bone, but because it's one bone, the whole pelvic area here, the third line, so to speak, attaches in the pubic right down there, and then goes all the way up through the middle um, line, linear, uh, along, alongside linear alba, into your sternum, into your clavicles, and then kind of splits off again, but stays as one line, um, connected just down here, sternum and clavicles, and goes into your um, sternocleidomastoid muscle, um, just out here, and then actually go around like a band into your head around here. Okay, now that we've established that, um, what does the superficial front line do in postural terms? Um, it provides a tensile, tensile support to the pubis, the rib cage, and the face or the head. Um, in so to speak, those are all areas that are actually protruding out of our body. So if we are standing up again, you're too tall for this. <laughs> So we're standing up and we kind of got the pubis or the, or the pelvic um, that kind of comes forward a little bit. We've got the rib cage again, you're flat here and then the rib cage comes out and you've got the same with the, with the head. You've got the flat surface here and then the head comes out. So you've got gravity kind of dragging down on that and the superficial front line got an upright tension holding those portions in place. Um, uh, furthermore, it also helps to keep the knees extended. If you remember from last time the superficial back line, it makes kind of sense that those two lines work together to keep the body in balance. So we're not falling backwards and we're not falling forwards all the time. So we've got a balance between flexion and extension. The Back line working in a downward pull, where your front line works in an upward pull. So you pretty much got a continuous pull happening, coming from the front, going up, pulling up to the back. Kind of works like the sail on a sailing boat. You've got the rig and you've got a line that pulls to keep that rig up. And the sail then comes up from this side. So you've got the sail usually here 
you've got that line pulling on that side. Once that line keeps pulling that way, that sail then comes up and you've got that tension happening. Cool. Alrighty. Um, what does the superficial front line do in movement? Um, it creates flexion of the trunks, uh, of the trunks, <laughs> of the trunk <laughs> and of the hips. Um, extension of the knees as well as some dorsiflexion in the feet um, and the neck it does a bit more complex uh, movements because we've got other muscles in that as well um, but we'll get to that a bit later on so overall as I said the main thing for the superficial front line is that upward tension that we're having so if everything work in, works um, as it should we've got an upright position with a tensile function pulling us nicely upright and up. If that is not working, we see a lot of this happening. <laughs> so that tension kind of disappearing, everything is drawing down, and the back line has to work really, really, really hard to kind of keep us upright here. And besides all that happening, you also can see uh, restrictions in breathing and a forward shifted head as well. Um, there's heaps to talk about the superficial front line, but I really want to pick on uh, one thing in particular, um, as we're going to come back to the superficial front line once we talk about some of the other lines that are about to come. So the one point I would like to talk to you about is um, when you mobilize or stretch the superficial front line, um, it comes down to um, your head position um, if you want to actually create the tension and in, like the intention that you have of working with the superficial front line you need to make sure that your head is in the right position because I've got a couple of um, exercises or to show you stretches mobilizers you can do to work on the superficial front line and as I said before because you've got that band coming up through the um, SCM to the back of your head, um, you you see a lot of people when they go into a back bend, um, they start bending back, bending back, bending back, and then the head goes back here. Okay, so which is fine if you want to stretch through the deep front line, because what happens? Because you've got that attachment here from your clavicles back to your head there. So if you go and tilt your head back, this actually shortens. So you're giving your body through the um, superficial front line more chance to extend further. Where if you're actually keeping this where it should be, to try and extend that as much as you can. So it's kind of like you're trying to pull your head back keeping the chin kind of nicely down straight to um, maintain that tension here and try and lengthen through, as I said, through that band, through the head and you should feel then more tension coming through because it's actually then harder to engage that front line to go back. So you're not really extending through the back here but more extending upwards and outwards, trying to open and lifting this up rather than just to go, all right, I'm just gonna bend through here as much as I can and to have that feeling of an even bigger bend, I'm just gonna do this. So, um, big, big difference. And I will show you quickly what I mean. So the first one we can do is um, from yoga, I think that's the Cobra. So you're pretty much coming down on the ground here Feet are uh, like this, flat on the ground, and then you're pushing through. If um, because we're doing a stretch and not a strength um, exercise, you can actually use your use your hands, your arms to push yourself up. Um, if it was a strength screen for the lower back, you'd go up without your hands. Anyway, so this one using your hands to come up and lengthening through that front. And now, as I said, important here, if you want to work with the superficial front line, try and just lengthen through that head rather than to actually go and do this one. Um, 
once we get into the deep front line, this is definitely something you can do. Also talking, mobilizing with those. If you're doing a stretch, then yes, go into this and just hold and push further if you can. Um, I recommend to do stretches just before um, going to bed at night, really because what you're doing to your muscles is you're switching them off. So if you still got some work to do in front, like ahead of you in the day, if you're exercising in the morning, um, I would definitely go ahead with this one, push yourself up, and then lower yourself down. So you've got those nice, rhythmical movements happening. Use your breathing as your timer, and focus on your breathing to go deep in and breathe out. And breathe in and breathing out. So mobilizing or dynamic stretching, but dynamic would be more movement really. So um, yeah, for mobilizing purposes, small, rhythmical, timed, subtle movements to reach into that fascia, intention on lengthening the tissue and yeah, not forcing or jerking or pulling anywhere in the body. All right, number two, going a bit more into the legs here. So you're pretty much on your knees, like so. You want to sit your butt into, in between your feet. I don't know if you can see that here. No, you can't. Anyway, so you can see my feet are on the side of my bum. Oops. My feet are on the side of my bum. And we just sit down. And from here, Slowly, if you're not, if your body is not really strong in bending back, if it's too much tension coming from here, and you lay down. And on this one, it's automatically really that you've got your chin down on your chest. And again, it's then this trying to lengthen through the head, try and pull that long, that intention on lengthening through the head to get a good, nice stretch through here. Okay, um, this one definitely more a static stretch to hold. So for some people, even just to sit like this, um, you might already find um, quite a stretch happening through um, the front of the leg here on the ankles. Um, you might feel that quite tender and quite restrictive. Um, you might feel it in the knees already quite a bit. So for some people, um, mobilizing or stretching that area, um, again, to actually sit with your feet flat on the ground like so, and then just to sit back onto your heels. So for some people, um, just to sit in that position for 20 to 30 seconds is actually enough to stretch through that front line down on the feet, on the ankle area. And also, if you haven't seen it yet, last uh, my last block entry actually showed a nice um, mobilizing exercise that I usually do first thing in the morning to work the back as well as the front line, just to wake up and get nice and mobile. All right, well, um, again, I hope this will just give you a bit more of an explanation why I always work other areas that don't seem to be painful or um, giving you grief or problems. But um, as I showed you at the beginning, when the front line doesn't work, what we often see as I said, is that all that kind of caves in and the head comes forward and comes down. So if people present with upper or lower back pain, it to me just makes sense to loosen up here through the front because all this is um, either a weakness in, in the line, um, actually in the back line, that where the, say the tension is not there from the back holding us up. So this is all just collapsing or there's actually tightness through the front here as well. So it's either a matter of strengthening the back to try and pull this back, or also a matter of opening up through the front, which in a lot of cases is actually more what we need, particular through the hips here, because we're sitting a lot. So um, yeah, opening that up to be able to bring all this back and take some tension off the back. Um, so this is yeah, this is the reason why I always work areas that, as I said, aren't necessarily screaming at you. Um, 
but that's the thing like in, in a lot of cases it is actually more the over lengthened muscles that have been holding on for so long so in you know your back muscles that have been being pulled forward so much trying to keep you upright they're the ones that scream out where the ones that are like that if that's your muscle you've got your muscle fibers that usually if you contract they work together if you relaxed they come apart so if you've got muscles that are constantly locked in like this so they're bulged they're short they're locked short or you've got muscles that are constantly pulled under tension like this what's like if you just do that with your hands you should feel yourself what is actually more strenuous to the body so these muscles are the ones that scream out at you because if you keep pulling if you keep pulling they're just going to snap at some stage where here there is not much that can happen this you know this is just tight it holds in it might get tighter get tighter get tighter but it takes a lot more for that than to to birth or whatever to to take it to get a rupture happening than if you've got tension like that all the time and it's just going to snap at some stage so yeah, just give that a play and um, you should feel what I'm, what I'm getting at here. So just a note on the side, so we're talking about um, locked long muscles or locked fascia, which is eccentrically loaded, or you've got your concentrically loaded muscle or short locked fascia. All right, so last but not least, as I said, I'm changing from juices and smoothies to soups because it's getting bloody freezing already out there. And this month I just went for a um, old fashioned potato and leek soup and you jump onto um, Google internet and search for recipes and you get uh, quite a few different ones and they're all you know, rather fancy and add lots of different things in. However, I like to keep it simple and um, so my recipe is literally one leek stalk, um, mostly the white stuff, but if you've got some nice green fresh um, put that in as well if it's a bit uh, bit um, wilted already or um, you know going limp and stuff then chuck it out um, otherwise whole stock of leek um, about two to three fist sized potatoes and cut it all into pieces put it in a pot fill it all top it up with water and cook it down once it's all soft get the blender out and just mash it up and after that just Put spices in to your liking. I personally like a bit of nutmeg and cinnamon is actually quite nice for a real comfy warming taste. You could chuck some ginger in if you wanted to. As I personally like to keep it simple most of the times. Um, but flavor wise you can just play and put in whatever you, whatever floats your boat. Um, if you like a bit of crunch with it. So instead of just, you know, sitting there and spooning out your soup. I personally actually like to have some crackers uh, to eat the soup with <laughs> and I've um, put a picture on here which you can see now. It's late July is the brand and they do quite a few nice flavors. They're all organic, GMO free, um, so they're really really nice um, kind of healthy, treaty, cheapy things <laughs> and um, or if you're not a big fan of uh, chips um, a good slice of you know like a whole meal or rice sourdough um, sprouted bread stuff like that really really nice as well all right that's it from me this time i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got something out of it and till next time see you soon bye